And tonight at Pagula Ice Arena, one of the great events of the year as sixth ranked Penn State welcomes Notre Dame for the annual Wear White game. Penn State 17-7-1 on the year, tied for second place in the Big Ten, going for a split tonight against Notre Dame in what should be a raucous atmosphere here in Hockey Valley. A record crowd a night ago to see game one of this weekend's two-game series between the Nittany Lions and Fighting Irish. Always a great game when these two get together. Brian Tripp, delighted to be with you tonight here for the Penn State men's hockey pregame show we welcome you inside pagula ice arena where you are among 6,000 plus anticipated here tonight for penn state and notre dame penn state dominated the game last night but notre dame stole it by a two to one final score let's take a look back at the highlights from last night's game between penn state and notre dame penn state striking first in this game for the 19th time in 25 games this year danny genia buries it penn state outshoots notre dame 20 to 6 in the opening period notre dame then would rally despite Despite being outplayed, great wraparound there from Justin Janicki sets up Chase Primo out front that ties the game at one in the second period, early third period on the power play. A backhand snipe top shelf by Ryder Ralston. Notre Dame takes a 2-1 lead, but that wasn't the story. It wasn't the offense. It was the goaltending from Ryan Bischel for Notre Dame. Bischel setting another career high in saves against Penn State. Many of those spectacular 52 stops a night ago. Again, a game Penn State dominated, but Ryan Bischel helps Notre Dame steal, and Notre Dame comes in to a record-setting environment here in Hockey Valley and wins it by a 2-1 to one final score. So that was the final score a night ago between Penn State and Notre Dame. This wraps up their season series. The two teams playing for the fourth time in just over a month. These two teams also met back in mid-December back at Compton Family Ice Arena in South Bend. And that was a split. Penn State going for the split tonight. And the second game of that series actually had a lot of the same focal points that last night's game had here in Hockey Valley. Let's take a look back now at the previous two games from when these two teams met earlier this year. So you have a full lay of the land on this series going into tonight's game. In game one, Penn State overcame an early first period deficit. Connor McMenamin started the scoring for the Nittany Lions and then Paul DeNaples would follow up with his first of two on the game. Penn State scoring a pair of goals in just over one minute and left the first period with a 2-1 lead. Notre Dame rallied to tie it at two, but here's the game winner. Beautiful setup. Kevin Wall to Connor McEachern. Penn State went up 3-2. They tack on a pair of empty netters. This is Dylan Gratton with the first. Naples had the second. 5-2 Penn State won game number one. Then in game number two, going for a sweep. Look at this play by Nick Lieberman carrying and juggling the puck up the ice. Handed to Ryder Rolston. Rolston scored. Notre Dame would not look back. It was all Notre Dame on the scoreboard despite 50 shots on goal for Penn State. Goaltender Ryan Bischel for Notre Dame, a career-high 47 saves. Penn State rallied late, 5-2 the score right here. Christian Sarlo out front jams it in, but Penn State falls 5-3. In game number two on the road at Notre Dame, and the two teams split the series. Pretty incredible performance. Ryan Bischel had 47 saves in that last game that you saw there. 52 saves last night. So 99 saves in his last two games against Penn State. Penn State has played extremely well against Notre Dame, but he and the Fighting Irish have been their kryptonite. Although last night did not hurt Penn State in the Big Ten standings as we take a look at the current league standings. Man, it's neck and neck in that battle for second place. Penn State at 24 points. Ohio State, 24 points. Michigan State, 24 points. Right now, Minnesota atop. They're number one in the pairwise. They have 36 points leading the Big Big Ten and the Golden Gophers with an overtime victory 4-3 to three on a Matthew Nyes game winner last night against Michigan. But there you see it. Minnesota, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State all battling the top four teams at some point will have home ice in the Big Ten tournament. And as we start to wind down January, you start to focus on those conference standings. Notre Dame, Michigan, and Wisconsin round out those Big Ten standings. But as we said tonight is the wear white game here in Hockey Valley. The fans already filing into student body. The Roar Zone is such a great environment here at Pagula Ice Arena. The Roar Zone, incredible every single night, but tonight they were wrapped outside the building, lined up all the way around the field hockey complex. This is one of the most highly anticipated games of the season. Also highly anticipated tonight, Penn State will unveil new alternate uniforms, and the team released those uniforms earlier this week. Let's check it out. Morning.
aren't those sick threads that Penn State will be donning tonight. And on each seat, as you can see there, a rally towel that has that stripe, the Penn State locked in blue across the gray stripe on the front of those rally towels. And those jerseys will be auctioned off at the conclusion of the season for a good cause. Well, this game always brings out the best in the best players here in this wear white game. And one of the guys that's always made his mark, not only in the wear white game, but during his time in Hockey Valley was Penn State captain Alex Limoges. He's now playing in the American Hockey League with the Manitoba Moose and the AHL affiliate of the Winnipeg Jets. It was great to catch up earlier this week with one of the all-time greats to wear the Penn State sweater. Alex, great to catch up. Thanks so much for the time. I know you just had a couple of minutes to carve out for us here. Oh, thanks for having me, Tripper. Glad to be back. Uh, you can probably tell, I know you watch these games and follow the team, and you played in some of these wear white games before. What's the feeling the players have right now as they get set to take the ice? Just pure excitement. I know we've... Uh... When I was there, it was always marked on our calendar. So we're excited for um, just that atmosphere of Gula. It's, uh, it's something that I've never experienced since, too. Well, I know that you're hoping these guys can get a little revenge on Notre Dame tonight in this game. You had that famous game where you wear those football-style uniforms and the wear white game. You did the McSorley home run celebration. What are some of your fondest memories from playing in these big games over the years? Uh, probably that. Um that specific moment uh I if I remember right I don't think we won so that was tough so hopefully these guys can do it but uh especially against Notre Dame we uh we owe them a sweet victory here two and a half years into your professional journey it might be hard to believe even that time goes by that quickly but are you satisfied where, where do you feel like your game is at right now and what are you going to continue to do to keep earning those opportunities that you've had yeah uh, I think you just keep working on consistency and um and being a threat every time I'm on the ice. Uh, I, you know, I find that I'm, I'm hungry for that puck and I, I want to make plays and I want to score goals. And so uh, that's it. I just need to, you know, make sure every shift that I'm being a, a threat and, um, and just keep trying to be a leader out there. How often do you keep in touch with some of your former teammates? I know you were telling me before we started recording here that you just played Nate Susie's the other night and you guys were able to catch up afterwards. Yeah, uh, yeah a good bit here and there um a lot of exciting things happening personally for those guys now as we get older but uh, it's fun to play against these guys in the league and it's uh and always catch up after the game and have a little chat on the ice too so uh it's fun i miss them all uh and, the, and hopefully they're all having success but uh i know at the end of the day and especially in the summers we'll all regroup and have a time to really catch up yeah, and I know you had an opportunity to do that over this past summer. You were here in Hockey Valley doing a lot of training. Did you have an idea at that time, the type of team that Penn State may have this year? And uh, what kind of were your feelings about the team when you left to go up and start training back in Manitoba? Yeah, that was a, that was a very cool experience for me, being there this summer, training and getting to know the guys, the new guys, and um, and the connections that that we all developed. I, it was... Uh, it was pretty cool. I, I think everybody in that locker room and all the alumni that came back knew that there was something special. Um, just being, you know, training with them and skating with them. Uh, a lot of, a lot of great players in there and, and great attitudes. So uh, it's not a surprise that they're doing so well. I just hope that, uh, you know, when it comes time for playoffs that, that they keep it rolling. Well, hopefully they can keep it rolling tonight. Limo, great to catch up. Have a great rest of the season. Thanks so much for the time. All right. Thanks so much. Good luck guys. Always great to hear from former Nittany Lions and appreciate the time that Alex Limoge spent with us earlier this week as we are getting closer and closer to this 5.07 puck drop tonight between Penn State and Notre Dame for the annual Wear White game. The game is airing on Big Ten Plus. We'll have the call for you there and also on the Penn State Sports Network. This game, just a part of a monster sports weekend here in Happy Valley. Earlier today across the street at the Bryce Jordan Center, the Penn State men's basketball team defeating Nebraska 76-65. to Last night, the BJC duel, Penn State over Michigan, 30 to 8 in front of a capacity crowd there and a lot of events tomorrow including wrestling back at rec hall against michigan state there you see zach gershman on your screen he's over at the bjc just took in penn state 76 65 win over nebraska and zach once again it was a three-point barrage for penn state andrew funk had a great game with five three-pointers he paced the team with 23 points 
did, and he started off the game. There was a tip off. The ball went to Jalen Pickett. Pickett passes it to Funk, and Funk nails it in for a three-pointer. Seth Lundy followed out with a three-pointer. As you said, Brian, a three-point barrage. The Nittany Lions went into that first half with the 29-23 lead over Nebraska, and the Legion of Blue was allowed the entire event. The BJC, the second deck was open. The crowd was energetic from the entire time. And then in the second half, the Nittany Lions, it's as if they didn't skip a beat. They continued it going, ultimately going to that 70, to 76, 65 lead. And there were a couple acrobatic layups from Cameron Winter and from Andrew Funk. And before the game, though, Seth Lundy was honored uh, with receiving his 1,000 points a couple weeks ago when they played Indiana here at the BJC. He was given a basketball from Micah Shrewsbury, uh, commemorating that moment. And our very own Destiny Sanchez caught up with Seth Lundy postgame. I'm here with Seth Lundy. Great game today, 16 points. What about today's performance for you do you think contributed to your success? Uh, you know, I just stuck with it. Uh, the first half, you know, I was in foul trouble, only had two points. But, you know, my teammates believe in me, and they told me I need a big second half for us to, you know, have a comfortable win. And uh, that's what I did. I came out. I was a little aggressive, taking good shots, and, uh, you know, even swinging extra passes even for my teammates. So they trusted me, and I trusted them. Absolutely. Now, coming off a loss on the road, how important is this win at home for morale for the team with Rutgers coming up on Thursday? Yeah, you know, uh, that loss on the road, like we took that personal. We felt like we should have won that game. And, uh, you know, we just went back to the drawing board and, you know, we executed the game plan for the day. And uh, we got the win. And uh, that's what it's all about. But, you know, we're going to prepare for, these, for, for, for Rutgers and then, you know, the next game after that. Penn State Nation definitely came out to support you guys tonight. How important is having your fan base here, like with a bunch of energy, a bunch of electricity at your home court? Uh, if they see this interview, I just want to let them know that they definitely help us out. Uh, like they don't understand, like they're a big part of our win too. They're a big part of our energy and our defense. And when we out there and, and when, the, when the crowd yelling, when we making shots and getting stops, like that just give us a little more boost and uh, you know that, that's the stuff that we need. We need them to keep coming out and uh, keep supporting them. We love them the same way they love us. Seth, congrats on the win today. Thank you. Awesome day over there at the Bryce Jordan Center. That building has been rocking all weekend long. What a big win again that was today for Micah Shrewsbury and his team. I know that place was rocking as you talked about moments ago. Yes, it was, and Seth said, if Nittany Nation, no, when Nittany Nation sees this, because we're talking about men's hockey, and we're talking about men's basketball here on this pregame show, but Penn State truly stood up, and they stood out. That second hundred level here at the BJC was allowed. The environment, they definitely made an impact, especially with the Legion of Blue switching sides and being behind both Nebraska and Penn State's bench, both giving them that boost and making sure Nebraska knows that the Legion of Blue is still here. All right, Zach, great work over there at the BJC. The Penn State hockey team just took the ice here at Pagula. So we'll see you later on tonight, Zach, as I know you're going to run back over here to watch the game. Thanks so much. Great stuff, as always, as the Penn State hockey team is on the ice for warm-ups here at Pagula Ice Arena, and the fans get their first look at those new threads, and Penn State trying to split this series with Notre Dame. I welcome in my broadcast partner, Eric Olson, to our broadcast here as well for the Penn State Hockey pregame show. We welcome our audience live to Tonight, whether you're watching on Facebook, Twitter, on GoPSU TV, or wherever you may be watching from, Eric and I are going to start to break down this game. And there's Connor McEachern. His line, Eric, has been really good with Connor McMenamin and Kevin Wall. They were a trio that created a lot of opportunities. I mean, who did it a night ago for Penn State? They had 53 shots on goal. Up and down the lineup, everyone con con contributed with getting pucks to the net, and especially led by that line, like you said. That trio complements each other so well. They all can play fast, they play a hard-nosed game, and when they're meshing, they can generate offense like anyone else. And this should be a raucous crowd here tonight. Eric, the question is, how do you feed off of the crowd in a game like this? Surprisingly, Penn State's results in the wear-white game haven't been good, but I have a feeling there's going to be some hysteria early in Hockey Valley tonight. I hope there is. I really <laughs> hope there is. This crowd is just incredible. I mean, the Roar Zone, before warm-ups even started just a minute ago, the Roar Zone was filled from bottom to top. So you got to feed off this environment from the get-go. They did a good job of it last night in this record crowd. It's all about winning a few face-offs early, getting pucks to the net, and trying to ride that momentum. Well, we obviously talked about Ryan Bischel a bit on this broadcast already. We just saw Liam Sulier there in goal for Penn State. He has been steady and so good all year long. He really has. He's made save after save when his team has needed him. And that exudes confidence all the way through the lineup. 
and that allows guys to just play their game. You feel relaxed and know that, hey, my goaltender is going to make a save. And Danny Jania, someone last night who had a great goal assisted by Jared Crespo, he got the primary assist because Crespo did a great job twice keeping a puck alive in the attacking zone, got a puck towards the net. Jania got the rebound and put it in past Bischel. It took that type of shot to beat Ryan Bischel last night. Probably no surprise by looking at your picture there. Number 13 is the smallest player in college hockey at five foot four. But that trio with Tor Linden and Ashton Calder, Geneva's now playing his best hockey of the year. He's been very consistent. Oh, speaking of consistency, the senior Ironman captain, no one's played in more games in a Penn State career, especially four games in a row, than this guy, Paul DeNaples. Is there a more steady player than Paul DeNaples? I don't know if there is. And you can go a lot of games without really saying his name. And for a defenseman, that's not a bad thing because it means he's really not making mistakes. But last night, Paul made some really good plays defensively. He won some battles, helped get pucks out of the zone. And oh, by the way, he had those two goals in that win against Notre Dame back in South Bend. He was trying to score last night. Kevin Wall scores against any team. He's Penn State's leading goal scorer this year. 12 goals, 21 points. Man, he has a really good shot. He just missed a breakaway last night that really felt like it would have tilted the game the other way. It really would have. And that puck ended up on edge for him as he shot it. He was trying to go high glove. Up. Instead, it went over the bar, but he used his speed and his physicality to get leverage, and it created that breakaway opportunity. He's a guy, when he's playing fast and aggressive, using his big frame, he's going to get his opportunities. And there is a look at Ashton Calder. We talked about he and Tor Linden before two transfers coming into the program. Calder at his third stop in college hockey. This is an older, mature Penn State team. They're going to need to lean on that maturity tonight because the last couple of games, especially in Big Ten play, have been frustrating. They have played extremely well well, but they haven't gotten the results probably that they deserve. And every game has been a bit of a roller coaster, and you need that maturity in your lineup to be able to ride those waves of emotion. Last night, the emotion was, hey, we had such a great start in the first period, but struggled to beat Ryan Bischel. Then you finally get one, Notre Dame ties it, and it was just up and down from there. You had to kill some penalties. The power play wasn't clicking, but you bring in players like Calder and Linden, it just helps steady the locker room, and they already had great leadership to begin with. Well, we talked about Kevin Wall. You're getting a look there at some of the D-men for Penn State, including 24, Jared Crespo. Man, he continues to get more and more comfortable every game. He's playing his best hockey right now. And the freshman from East Hampton, New Jersey, has a three-game point streak. He scored his first career goal last weekend. And he very, mel very may well have been the best player wearing white last night. Hey, he really could have been. And he you can see the confidence he has now every time he's out on the ice. You know, For freshman defensemen, you don't know how long it's going to take for them to really feel comfortable playing collegiate hockey, especially in the Big Ten, where these games are so tough and so physical. But last night, he was all over the ice making plays. He's starting to add that offensive element to his game as well. Got his first goal last weekend against Michigan State and had a great primary assist on Geneva's goal last night. What do you think of the threats? I love them. They're so beautiful. I love the gray stripe across. Ben Kogut, the equipment manager, did such a great job designing these. You know what's crazy? 294 minutes without trailing for Penn State, get, dating all the way back to the 10th of December, that first series against Notre Dame. Then they fell behind last night. I thought they responded well and continued to push action as the game went on. They just couldn't find a way to get the puck in the back of the net. Dylan Gratton in from the line had quality opportunities, and he was snake bitten last night as well. He was. It, a lot of guys had good looks, and it's they were trying. It's a theme here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I wish we didn't have to keep talking about it, but we do because they're just coming so close. And a guy like Jimmy Dow Jr. brings in a great offensive element to his game as well. Penn State won with seven defensemen last night. They'll do it again here tonight. Yeah, let's take a look at the projected lines and starters for Penn State for tonight's game. You see Janine have Linden and Calder together. McEachern with McMenamin on the left wing, Kevin Wall on the right wing. Lampa, Sarlo, Paquette, they had chances last night. Chase McLean slides into the lineup, centering tonight, and the defensive pairings stay the same. Dowd, the extra skater, as the seventh defenseman, and Liam Soulier has been so good in goal. So Penn State taking on Notre Dame in the wear white game, trying to follow up the doubleheader with men's basketball with a win of their own here as they go for a split in Hockey Valley in front of what could be another record crowd here tonight. So we saw 
Penn State out there, there's Sarla, you know the lineups. One thing we had an opportunity to do, I thought, earlier that was really cool, Eric, I know you weren't with us here on the broadcast, a chance to catch up with one of the great alums from the program, Alex Limoges. Well, he's not the only player in the AHL having success right now. Right now, Brandon Byro, former Penn State captain, will represent the Rochester Americans in the AHL All-Star Game, and he also used to wear that number 10 right there when he was in Hockey Valley. I also had a chance to chat with Brandon Byro earlier this week. Brandon, great to catch up. Thanks for carving a few minutes out of your busy travel day. Yeah, no problem at all. Uh, first of all, congratulations on your selection to the AHL All-Star Game and to represent your team in Rochester. What's it mean to represent your team and the type of year that you've had so far? Uh, it's pretty cool. It's definitely an honor, but uh, obviously it's a team thing. It's, you know, it's pretty cool to obviously represent the team, but uh, you know, a lot of credit goes to, you know, everyone in the organization, teammates, coaches, you know, everyone for, for helping me get to this point and, you know, couldn't have done it without, without all those guys. Well, that answer hasn't changed from the answers you used to give during your time as a captain and as a player back here at Penn State. When you reflect on your journey to where you're at today, how would you describe the hockey journey that you've had so far? It's been fun watching from afar. Uh, it's been fun. It definitely hasn't been a straight line. Um, obviously, some ups and downs, gone through some injuries and been in and out of the lineup a little bit. My first couple of years pro I had the weird kind of COVID year where everything was, was a little bit different. So, you know, to say it would be a straight line to, you know, from my junior to college to here definitely wouldn't be accurate, but uh, I wouldn't change it for the world. And, you know, I think it's kind of made me into the player and, and person that that I am uh, currently. Yeah. So we're getting set for the wear white game here in Hockey Valley. You played in so many big games during your career. What's the feeling as the players get set to take the ice for a game like this tonight against Notre Dame? I think it's always exciting. The whiteout always had uh, a little bit more, more of an emphasis, a little bit more excitement around it. I remember, you know, even going out for warmups, you know, the crowd's full, the student section is full for a warm up, and you can just feel that energy beforehand. You know, that's going to be like that. And then, you know, when you see it come up for warmups and, and it is like that, it's, it's really special. And, you know, even moving into pro, like it, going through nights like that where you have that kind of energy, that kind of crowd, it, it can be hard to come by sometimes. So uh, I definitely am, am jealous that, that those guys get to play in, in front of that Penn State crowd again. And, you know, I do do anything to go back and, and play in one of those whiteout nights, especially. I know you're usually busy on weekend nights, Friday, Saturday night, but the Penn State team's having a, a great year so far this year. You had a chance to be around them a little bit here over the summer. What were your impressions then? And are you surprised at all about the way they're playing so far? No, and it's definitely not a surprise at all. I think, you know, when I was there, it was a team that was, you know, working really hard. They were, they were excited to be there and, and ready to get going. And I played with, you know, a lot of the guys who are seniors now. It's kind of the, the, that freshman class when I was when I was a senior myself. And so it doesn't surprise me, you know, to see those type of people leading and, and leading this team in the right direction and carrying on, you know, the culture that, you know, that was that was instilled even before I went there. So. It's definitely not, not a surprise at all. And, and that group of guys that, that are leading that team right now are, are special hockey players, special individuals. So uh, it's really cool to see. And, and it's great to see the team, you know, playing as well as they are. Yeah, Connor McMenamin, Kevin Wall scored some big goals in that 1920 season. And Paul DeNaples is still here. I mean, still here skating for Penn State. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> well, Brandon, we're so proud of you. Thanks for representing the program. Continued success. And it's great to catch in. Thanks, catch up. Thanks so much. Yeah, no, I appreciate it. Thank you. Obviously, a ton of excitement for tonight's hockey game here in Hockey Valley, but in Happy Valley, time is now to renew your tickets for the 2023 football season. The deadline for renewals is February 8th. Also, season tickets, deposits, $250 per seat. There's no deadline. Fans can reserve theirs right now to join Penn State for all seven home games, which should be a highly anticipated home season coming up for the defending champions of the Rose Bowl, coming off an 11-win season. So many great young stars and a talented team going into next year. And for season ticket holders, you have benefits like priority for away games, such as the Big Ten Championship, bowl games, other away games, exclusive access to pre-sales for special ticket offers and single game tickets, and also 0% interest payment plans are available. So as we're, I know, in the midst of winter here on a chilly and snowy day inside Hockey Valley, watching the Penn State hockey team warm up after a big basketball win and wrestling win across the street, we still have football on our minds as well as Penn State and Notre Dame get 
get set to square off here. We're just over 20 minutes away from puck drop between Penn State and Notre Dame. Not only is the Roar Zone awesome, Brian Tripp and Eric Olson back here live, but all of the fans that come out and everyone is decked out in white tonight for this Wear White game. It's an incredible scene. This game is always so fun to watch. The environment in Pagula is incredible and fans do a great job showing up early, being ready for warm-ups as players are out there tossing pucks into the crowd. The Roar Zone's ready to go. The band is playing. This It's just building so much energy into this building that Penn State has to take advantage of right from puck drop. How do you feed off of that energy? It, it's, it can be hard sometimes, especially when you're playing a quality opponent like Notre Dame who has so much experience and knows how to take away your game. That's what Notre Dame does better than anyone else, taking away your game. To get through that, you have to win battles early on, win some face-offs, get pucks in deep. The crowd will be with you. If you're getting pucks to the net like Penn State did last night early, they will be with you and you can ride that emotion, but it's all about outworking your opponent. And as I said earlier, Penn State has scored first in 19 of 25 games this year. We saw the shot margin discrepancy last night. That doesn't bother, bother a team like Notre Dame, led by head coach Jeff Jackson. These are two polar opposites in style. They're okay playing a game like that, and Penn State just can't get frustrated even though the puck didn't go in the net last night. Tonight, the difference is you just have to finish on your scoring chances. Exactly, and we've seen it happen so many times before against Notre Dame where they will defend better than anyone else and then counter against you. And all it takes is one goal for them to make a difference. They did it to Minnesota last weekend. Notre Dame was outshot in that Friday game against the Golden Gophers. Minnesota had to tie it with an extra attacker with a few seconds to go, goes to overtime, ends in a tie, goes to a shootout, Notre Dame gets the points. Similar script to what happened last night, except Penn State badly outshot them compared to what Minnesota did. But like you said, that's Notre Dame's MO, and they do it better than anyone else. This game coming up on Big Ten Plus. You can catch the action just after 5 o'clock there. Sixth ranked Penn State hosting Notre Dame in the annual Wear White game. We'll have the call. Brian Tripp and Eric Olson not only on Big Ten Plus, but on the Penn State Sports Network as well as we welcome you into our exclusive live coverage here on Facebook, Twitter, Go PSU TV on YouTube and also on Lion Vision for this exclusive coverage for the Penn State Hockey pregame show, taking on Notre Dame in one of the most anticipated sporting events in Happy Valley throughout the year. This is like taking the white out and cramming it inside a smaller arena. And as Guy says, inside a tin can as well and shaking it up. And it's just such a great atmosphere. You wish Penn State's record was better in these games, but it also speaks to the quality of opponent that they schedule this game for. And Big Ten hockey is the toughest hockey to play in the country. You talked about it in the standings earlier. You can see where everybody's at. It's a three-way tie for second right now. This is a big game for Penn State to try to get three points. Uh, no doubt about that. This is a monster game for the standings. Penn State and Notre Dame in the annual wear white game. You see the matchup right there on your screen from Hockey Valley. Notre Dame and Penn State coming up in just a little bit. Right now, the Big Ten, six of the seven teams are in the top 14 of the pairwise as the crowd is settling into their seats here. They may not be in those seats for long, but they're settling into their seats. This conference is just so tough. It's, it's so tough, and it speaks to how good it is when you see where everyone is in the pairwise. Up and down, look, Wisconsin, big result last night, shutting out Ohio State. Doesn't matter if you're in first place or last place in the Big Ten, you have to come with your A game every night because anything can happen. And that result helped Penn State out because it kept Ohio State at 24 points along with the Nittany Lions. So a big game today for both the Buckeyes and the Nittany Lions. If Penn State can get three points and move up a little bit, you go to Michigan next week and then Ohio State following up on the road. So this is a big game for Penn State to try to get that win. But up and down the Big Ten, anything can happen. You have to be ready from the start and try to play a good 60-minute effort. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. It will take a full 60 minutes between sixth-ranked Penn State and Notre Dame tonight. Thanks to everyone who is a part of this pregame show, an exclusive pregame show for what is one of the most highly anticipated hockey games in this building, not only this year, but in the 10 years in this wonderful facility. This is one of the more highly anticipated matchups. A very tough ticket here, but great work by Zach Gershman, Destiny Sanchez over at the Bryce Jordan Center. And of course, Ross Rumor helping guide our shift 
back producing our show here tonight. Well, Eric, thanks so much for your time. we got to get turned around and get ready for our broadcast here that's coming up on Big Ten Plus and on the Penn State Sports Network. Thanks so much for tuning in tonight. For Eric Golson, Brian Tripp, we'll talk to you on the broadcast coming up on Big Ten Plus. This has been the Penn State Men's Hockey Pregame Show.